under sequestration, immigration and customs enforcement, also part of DHS, will be forced to reduce detention and removal. Perhaps most critically, it would have serious consequences to the flow of trade and travel. So the sequestration budget cuts are here, a measly $85 billion of automatic cuts because they couldn't agree on real budget cuts that will basically do nothing to the American budget. And yet in the news, we have Janet Napolitano, head of Homeland Security, openly making threats that if they dare touch her precious Homeland Security budget, there might be new terror attacks or there might be a new wave of immigrants illegally flooding across the border. Let's play a short clip of that right now. Look, I don't think we can maintain the same level of security at all places around the country with sequester as without sequester. Threats from terrorism and the need to respond and recover from natural disasters do not diminish because of budget cuts. Let's just call it for what it is. It's a veiled threat. It is terrorism, and we know who the real terrorists are. We've seen countless false flag events from 9-11 on down, from the phony underwear bomber scenario used to sell body scanners to the public, and of course, the setting up of Homeland Security itself to terrorize the people. We know what it is. The dictionary definition of terrorism is the systematic use of fear or terror as a means of coercion, and that's just what they're doing. And of course, Janet Napolitano says she's not trying to scare anyone. She just wants them to plan for what if, if there's not enough money for TSA to grow passengers and uh, what to do if there's longer lines and you have to wait to get on a plane or if you're not able to make your flight. Average wait times to clear customs will increase by as much as 50 percent and at our busiest airports like Newark and JFK, LAX and O'Hare, peak wait times, which can reach over two hours, could easily grow to four hours. Homeland Security and other national security figures, Napolitano on down, don't want the public to even think that these national security apparatuses can be targeted by budget cuts. So that's why they want to reiterate the fear. They admittedly did it during the Bush administration using their color-coded fear chart. Every time Bush was down in the polls or that he faced re-election or that the public was beginning to doubt that the war on terror was real. Now we see it again, uh, as we already have in the Obama administration, the fear-mongering over checks won't go out, people are going to starve, people are going to go hungry. And then here's Napolitano adding on to that, that the country will break down and passengers will have to wait in lines and uh, the TSA won't be able to do its job. And it's not our fault if there's more terror attacks. Well, we know who's clearly behind the staged phony terror in this country. We also know that Homeland Security and TSA have never caught a real terrorist, especially at airports, and that the only terrorists they have set up in charge are those led by admitted FBI sting operations. But Napolitano wants you to think, that her precious Homeland Security budget is untouchable and that they have a right to occupy and control the direction of this country. Of course, Homeland Security's real money comes through black budgets and is used for continuity of government operations, uh, setting up of FEMA camps and a lot more. No one's even pretending to touch that money. Under sequestration, immigration and customs enforcement, I would not be able to maintain the 34,000 detention beds as required by Congress. It would also reduce our investigative activities in areas it's like human smuggling. They want you to be afraid of a wave of illegal immigration, even though they're admittedly planning to give amnesty to more than 11 million immigrants and pretty much openly don't do anything to restrict the border. In fact, Department of Justice and others give weapons to the drug cartels, allow them to ship in their drugs and then launder the money on Wall Street. They just want to, again, control and uh, instill fear in the American public. They're not going to do anything to stop illegal immigration one way or another, and they're certainly not going to stop terrorism, which they could just use to further their own agenda. We see through you, Janet Napolitano. We know that your odor comes from a defensive mechanism like a skunk or like a stink beetle to keep people away from your little precious jewel agency of Homeland Security so they'll think they can't cut your budget and uh, you'll just excrete this defensive odor upon the people. Well, stop it. You're repugnant. You're repugnant to the Constitution. Get away from our Bill of Rights. Stop using it as your toilet paper. Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of Homeland Security. If you try to take our money that is rightfully ours, we will unleash a legion of terrorists on you because we need our money 
to put our hands down your pants and create terror alerts and do all kinds of things to take away your freedoms and to pay for targets that look like <laughs> pregnant women and old men defending their homes. Those are the real terrorists. Take my money. Just take it, Gina DePolitano. Just take my money, please. Please, I'm so scared. Please take my money. Come on, seriously, this is ridiculous. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Texas public school students are donning burqas and learning that Muslim terrorists are freedom fighters now. So that's, that's a new wonderful thing that's happening here in the Texas public schools. A teacher has allegedly encouraged the schoolgirls to dress in full-length Islamic burqas and then instruct the entire class that Muslim terrorists are actually freedom fighters. And the teacher even allegedly said she doesn't agree with it, but she's supposed to teach people that they're not supposed to call them terrorists, they're freedom fighters. And at the end of the class, a teacher assigned a paper about Egypt and a student explained to reporters the topic of the paper was how Egypt was a good country until democracy took over and that things were finally corrected when the Muslim Brotherhood came into power. So is this teacher teaching students to think critically or is this more PC brainwashing? I mean, we're the ones that put the Muslim Brotherhood into power and now we have this brainwashing arm for our children that's telling them to think that that's good? This makes, again, no sense. And moving on to things that make absolutely no sense, let's, let's take a look at this. Eyewitness, yes, the Nazis did confiscate our guns. So this is an eyewitness, an Austrian citizen, Kitty Worthman, who's, who was actually there when Hitler was annex, the annexation of Austria. And she says she actually saw them uh, taking away citizens' guns. And yet all these gun control advocates and all these mainstream media people are trying to rewrite history and say that never happened. All the Austrian people had, all they all had guns. But the government said the guns are very dangerous. Children are playing with guns, hunting accidents happen, and we really have to have total control, safety. So we dutifully went to the police station and we registered our guns. Not long after, they said, no, it didn't help. The only way that we don't have accidents and crimes, you bring the guns to the police station and then we don't have any crimes anymore and any accidents. And if you don't do that, capital punishment. See, and that woman wasn't Jewish, she was Austrian. And they took her guns, she was actually there, she witnessed it. And now we have all these mainstream media outlets coming out like Salon.com publishing stuff like this. The Hitler gun control lie. And these stories are ridiculous. They're, it's amazing. Actually, it says the notion that Hitler confiscated everyone's guns is mostly bogus. Well, mostly bogus means partly true. Then they go on to say the law did prohibit Jews and other persecuted classes from owning guns, but this should not be an indictment of gun control in general. I'm pretty sure it should, because if you're Jewish and you get your guns taken away and then th millions of you are slaughtered in mass, that's a pretty good argument against gun control. I just think it's amazing that we live in a time where we're surrounded by such evil that we have these media outlets openly standing up for Adolf Hitler. It's just, it's amazing to me. And I think the point of stories like this is so that people won't make that connection between Adolf Hitler, who was a cult of personality back in his day, after the false flag Reichstag event, he passed an enabling act and became a dictator. And he was a horrible authoritative dictator that killed millions of people. And now today we have cult of personality Obama passing all of his unconstitutional executive orders and the NDAA where he can indefinitely detain US citizens without even a charge or a trial. I think that the mainstream media just doesn't want you to know that history repeats itself. Well, it's going to continue to repeat itself, whether or not Salon likes it or not. And actually, I think that people like Alex Seitzwald and Salon need to stop misdirecting people with partial bits of truth. Because were you there? No, you weren't. But Kitty, Kitty Worthman was, and she said it happened, okay? Moving on to more people who don't know what they're talking about, ABC is now defending their editing of Michelle Obama's automatic weapon claim. Apparently Michelle Obama went on to uh, Good Morning America and she claimed that 15-year-old Hadia Pendleton, who was killed in Chicago shortly after performing at the president's inauguration, was shot because some kids had some automatic weapons they didn't need. That's what she said. Uh, but actually, the Chicago police report says that uh, Pendleton was shot by a man who opened fire with a handgun. So it was a grown man using a handgun, but they actually edited that out. And Michelle Obama will obviously use 
any means she can to get this anti-Second Amendment propaganda out there, and then the mainstream media will go around behind her and try to pick up the pieces of her lies. And for more mental trinkets from our White House, uh, here's even more ridiculous advice from Joe Biden on guns and women's self-defense. Joe Biden on self-defense for women. If you want to protect yourself, get a double-barrel shotgun. As I told my wife, I said, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here or walk out, put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. Great advice, Joe. Not only would that be illegal, but a woman would then face an attacker with an empty shotgun. So Biden's telling his wife that she needs to take a double barrel shotgun, aim it out the window, fire two blasts, and then stand there with an empty gun while a would-be attacker continues to make her way there. Uh, Jill, I think what you need to do is call Secret Service and not take advice from your husband or else you're going to end up dead. Good. You a U.S. citizen? That's my business. Well, it's our business to ask. Are you a U.S. citizen or not? You can ask. That's fine. And you have to answer me. Or I'll mm -hmm. have to detain you until you can either tell me that you're a U.S. Well, I don't have to answer you because I have uh, rights as an American. Sir, go ahead and pull over there or behind that other vehicle if you do me a favor. That's, no, thanks. I'd like to just go on my way. You, you can go on your way as soon as you tell mm -hmm. me if you're a U.S. citizen. Well, you know, I, I didn't know that I have to go around proving that I'm a citizen. Do I need to like show my papers like the Nazis or I'm not, am I immigrating somewhere or is this Mexico or huh? Well, well, let me ask you this, you know, is this Nazi Germany now? I have to show my papers. It's a simple yes or no. You can either answer it or we can detain you here until we figure mm -hmm. out whether you're a U.S. citizen. Well, you know, what's, what's more simple is the fact that my freedom is a little more important than you seem to think. And that, you know, setting up checkpoints where people have to prove that they're a citizen is not something that America is supposed to be about. So, I'm not sure if you understand that. Huh? No. Uh. He doesn't want to tell me a citizen. Well, I'm just, I mean, I'm just driving down the road here and I've been stopped for some reason. And I'm, you know, I'm supposed to, uh, no thank you. I want you to pull up secondary, sir. No thanks. I want, I want to go free on my way. I'm, you know, here I am just going about my own business and, you know, I don't need to stop at a checkpoint where I have to prove who I am because this is America. Okay. You know, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, did I stumble into Mexico or is it still the United States? Well, it's just the United States. Okay, well then therefore I should have the freedom to travel unmolested because okay. I'm in America here. Okay. So. Go, go ahead, go. Go ahead and go where? Keep going on the road. Okay, see you later. Hey,